one actually ties really nicely back to um, your friend John Lewis in most more recent events. In fact, I think it's the reason that you couldn't be here at your originally scheduled date, yes. because you needed to go back and vote on gun control. That's correct. And he staged an extraordinary, extraordinary event on the floor of the House. So it's a two-part question. The first is, what were your thoughts about that event on the floor of the House? And the second is, is there really any chance for gun control? I was very proud of what they did over there because extraordinary times call for extraordinary actions. And how many of these shootings are we going to sit through and just keep revoting and keep killing these bills and allowing weapons of war out there, uh, which even the family of the individual who invented the assault weapon said it was only meant for military use, law enforcement. Um, so I went over to the house to see John and to see my colleagues, and I thought it was a cry for help, that's appropriate. What do we, you know, you, you want to follow all the rules of demeanor and decorum, and we do, but every once in a while, something like this happens now. They still don't, haven't had a vote. They just want to have a vote on something simple, like don't let terrorists get their hands on weapons. And the argument is, oh, but you might be on the list by mistake. Well, you, there are ways to work on that. If you had to wait to get your weapon, if, or if you were in an extraordinary situation, there are ways that that's just not an argument. And um, they can't get a vote. So I applauded what they did. Until people make this a voting issue our way, because 90% of the people agree with us, 90, but they're all convinced on, oh, let's vote on transgender bathrooms or something ridiculous that has zero impact, you know, on our lives. Uh, we'll never get this done. So, so people have to find out where their congressperson or senator stands on this. And, you know, I just have to say, Dianne Feinstein was so right with her ban on assault weapons that we got passed in 94, and it, in 2014, it expired. Um, and you see what's going on in these open carry states. In Cleveland, they came out with the rules. You can't carry a tennis ball, but you can, with a permit, have a carry, open carry gun. But you can't carry a tennis ball. It could be dangerous. You could throw it at somebody and hurt them. <laughs> the last I checked, you can't get a tennis ball through a, a, a chest protector that the police wear. So it's, it's crazy. And what was the second part? What do I think is going to happen? Mm -hmm. That's up to the people of the country. And I say that not as a cop out at all, but it's the truth until the people start voting on this issue. It's, they're gonna, that's what's gonna happen. And all of this violence that is beyond our ability to even absorb. I was talking to someone who's a psychologist and I said to her, you can't in a way watch it anymore because how much grief, how much sadness, how much angst, can people actually carry around with them and still function? I mean, that's, I mean, how, how could you look at what happened in Nice? That they, this man ran over babies and carriages and dolls and absorbed that. So, we have to be smart about what we're doing, which is a multi-pronged thing. We need police community relations, we need community police. Nobody should have to kiss their family member goodbye, be they a police officer of any color or a black teenager, and, and say, oh my God, am I going to see you tonight? 
I mean, look, that could always, it's always in the back of our minds that something bad could happen. But in the front of our minds, this is unacceptable. So we need to face it, restore the faith in the community. Community policing is something I started when I was a county supervisor. It was so great. We took people out of the precinct that was a central police precinct. We put them in the neighborhoods. They knew who the bad actors were. They knew who the good leaders were. The police have to reflect the makeup of the community, just like the Senate has to reflect the makeup of the country. And we have to defeat Al-Qaeda and ISIL or ISIS or Daesh, whatever you call them. They keep changing it every day. We have to defeat the terrorists and we are taking away their caliphate. They've lost a lot of it. And we have to have better relations in the community and better intelligence in the community. And that doesn't mean going door to door asking someone if they believe in Sharia law. <laughs> it means winning over the confidence and the caring and the trust of the community. And I know I've gone on, but it's a multifaceted question these issues are pervasive, and they will be front and center in the presidential race. And I know who the person is who's going to have the answers. And it's going to be a she, <laughs> not a he. So we have a question that's very closely related to that, or that you, you actually um, anticipated, I would say. Uh, it says, Brexit has shown that a protest vote can happen. Um, how can we reach Americans who feel the institutions and current system don't work for them, since it doesn't seem to be working for everyone? Um, I find those kind of statements to be cop-outs. Oh, the system is broken. Fix it. Fix it. Vote. Get involved. Not for some fringe person. That doesn't help us. Get your issue front and center. And work, make sure this is a democracy. This is a really strong democracy. And when people say, they say things, and I talk about this in the book, they're all alike. Like Ralph Nader said, Republicrats. How absurd. How ridiculous. Just ask a parent of someone who lost a child in the Iraq war. Was it really everyone was alike, Republicrats? I don't think so. And look, look, no candidates are perfect. Let's be clear. The only perfect candidate for you is you. Because there is nobody else like you. There's nobody else who sees the world like you. There's no one else who's had your experience and you know what you think is right. You're the perfect candidate for you, but it doesn't work that way. Because you're not the candidate, I'm not the candidate, but you have to gravitate toward the one that maybe is 90% like you, recognizing no one is perfect. And then all this thing, but are they authentic? Yeah. Donald Trump is authentic. He's an authentic bully. He's an authentic demagogue. He's an authentic insulter. And Hillary Clinton is an authentic intelligent person who's not a backslapper, who gets in the room and gets it done. And not everybody has the personality of Bernie, you know, who I love, or me. We're from Brooklyn. We have a different personality. <laughs> Some of us are from the Midwest, and we have a different personality. <laughs> and it's not who's authentic. It's about who do you fight for? What do you believe in? Are you ready to get the job done? Can you roll up your sleeves? Are you smart? So sometimes I think people just ask questions that are irrelevant. We are not a perfect nation. That's why our founders said, a more perfect union. It certainly wasn't perfect when it started. Oh my God. And just getting the right to vote for blacks, for women. You know, I urge you as we approach the 100th anniversary of women getting the right to vote, go read about what it was like. 
Go see some movies like Iron Jawed Angels. Go see what it was like. I stand on the shoulders of women who were force fed in a Democratic presidency of Woodrow Wilson. He was annoyed. He had promised them the vote. Then World War I happened. He said, too bad. You're a distraction. Get out of my view. And they said, no, we're not going to do it. And so he threw them in jail. They went on a hunger strike, and he force fed them. And every name in the book that they were called, and that a lot of women have been called, and that certain women are still being called. This is a country that moves in the right direction, but it's very hard. It's a battle. It's a fight. And this election is so critical because it's about whether we keep on moving forward together, pulling forward together, or turn on each other with fear. And so that was a long answer to a short question, but <laughs> there's so much involved in what we're, what we're dealing with today.